So now we are going to learn about EM algorithm and if you can recall from the lecture EM algorithms are mainly used when we have missing data and we want to estimate the parameters of the distribution and we saw the examples for normal and binomial distribution. So we are going to reconsider them over here also and we will begin with your normal one EM algorithm for normal okay so first of all we will import numpy as np and let us take whatever is the given data to us so let me just mention x observed these are the observed values so we are going to create an array for this np dot array it would contain observed data points so those are 0 0.55, 2 0.20, 1 0.37, 0 0.85, 0 0.92 and 2.57. So you can see that these are the same data points that we considered in your theory part also. So six data points are given okay? and these are the observed ones. So what how many are observed? So let us store this in an observed number of observed data points. It would be the length of this particular array. Okay. And what are the total numbers? Let me just write and total is 10. That is the total number of data points. It means four are missing in this case and you can write as n missing would be n total minus n observed okay so from the total that is 10 you will subtract the observed that is 6 you will get 4 now let us to begin with let us take the initial values of the parameters so let us take as mu old as 0.8 and sigma square old sigma 2 old as 1 okay. now we are going to define a function for the e step and likewise we will do for the maximization step okay so in e step basically it will calculate the expected log likelihood of the observed data points given the current values of mu and sigma square that we have taken 0 0.8 and 1. So let us define that function. So let me define, define a function for the e step. So define e step. And here you will enter mu and sigma square so mu sigma square so it would be returning minus n observed if you can recall this the form that we wrote in while we're calculating the estimator for normal distribution so we wrote this into np dot log of sigma square okay minus 0.5 divided by sigma square into np dot sum x observed summation x i is x i is square so you will raise it to the power 2 okay plus okay so minus 0 0.5 by so 1 by 2 sigma square into summation x i square plus mu divided by sigma square into np dot sum again summation x i would come x observed minus there was n total total number of observations into mu square 
divided by 2 sigma square 2 sigma square so 2 sigma square would be in bracket over here okay so let us just cross check so minus n observed divided by twice of sigma square log sigma square and then it would be sigma square times summation xi square then mu by sigma square into summation xi minus n mu square divided by 2 sigma square so this code over here it is, is defining your e step okay e step function it will compute the expected value of the complete data log likelihood and this function would take the current parameter estimates for mu and sigma square as input and it will return the expected log likelihood likewise we can define a function for the m step define a function for the m step in order to update your mu and sigma square so define m just go step so here it would be mu old comma sigma square old okay so here your mu nu if you remember we obtain mu nu nu as summation x i plus n times mu divided by the total number of observations so let me just write np dot sum because we are finding out this we are using this function over here x observed summation x i x observed plus n underscore missing that is n minus m term that we had into mu old and this whole is divided by n total okay so we can cross check nb dot sum x observed would be there plus n times n minus m times mu old divided by n total likewise we can also write for sigma square new this one would be what again np dot sum x of summation xi square basically so x observed square okay plus n missing that is n minus m times sigma square old so sigma square old plus mu old raised to the power 2 whole divided by total number of observations minus mu new whole squares so, mu new that we have just calculated above right if you remember this is the formula that we had for your mu and sigma square so np dot sum x observed this entire thing would be there so this bracket will not end over here rather it would end at this point okay see divided by n total minus mu nu and then it would return mu nu and sigma square new okay so we have defined an m step function also that is going to update the parameter estimates mu and sigma square based on the expected log likelihood okay now for your em algorithm we are considering a tolerance level and convergence tolerance basically and your maximum number of iterations that we will be needing so here i can write here itself so tolerance as 1 e minus 6 okay so this algorithm basically checks for convergence by comparing the absolute differences between the old and the new estimates 
okay so if both the differences are smaller than the specified tolerance that we have defined just now then the algorithm has converged and it will exit the loop so for that purpose we are writing it and how many iterations it will go so let me just write that maximum iteration suppose is 100 for our case now let us initiate the for loop for iteration in range that is the maximum number of iterations that we have defined okay so this is a for loop that iterates for a maximum of these many number of iterations it will control the number of times the em algorithms e step and m step would be performed or executed for this we would write mu nu would be there sigma square nu So then m step mu old sigma square old okay so inside the loop the m step is called the with the current parameters estimates that is mu old and sigma square old which are used to update the parameter estimates over here as mu new and this now the updated parameter estimates are stored in mu new and sigma square new okay next what we do is we start this if statement so if we write if np dot absolute the difference that we were checking if np dot absolute mu new mu new minus mu old right the difference between these two is less than the tolerance okay and np dot absolute of sigma square o sigma square nu and difference between sigma square nu and sigma square old if this is less than the tolerance both the differences are less than the tolerance then the algorithm has converged and it will exit the loop for this what we do is we write break okay otherwise what will happen mu old and sigma square old would be storing mu new and sigma square new okay so if the algorithm has not converged the updated estimates that is mu new and sigma square new become the new estimates for the next iteration okay it will again go to this and it will again start okay so this loop is basically a major part of your em algorithm because it will iterate through your e step and the m step repeatedly updating the parameters estimates until the convergence criteria is met or the maximum number of iterations is reached okay so finally we can print your mle for mu new and mu old so maybe just i could okay so i'll write the comment over here print maximum likelihood estimator of mu would be mu new and let us write the estimate for your sigma mle of sigma square would be sigma square new okay so this is what you get over here so your mle maximum likelihood estimate for mu is 1.40 and for sigma square it comes as out as 0.544 okay so you started with 0.8 mu and it reached till 1.4 and for sigma square old it is 0.544 okay so you see that even though your data was missing 
you were able to find out an estimate for these parameters by using the EM algorithm and that is why this is a very important algorithm and concept. So likewise, this is for normal distribution because these are the simple cases. You can generalize it for multivariate normal distribution, likewise for multinomial distribution. So that those things can also be performed using the EM algorithm. Next, we are going to do it for binomial distribution. So let us do that. So here again, we are going to import numpy. Although we have imported it, you do not have to write it again and again. But if it is, you need to rerun this step in case. So I'm just writing it afresh. So you will write the given data. So let us just write what are the observed values. So for that, we are going to create an array, np dot array, and here we would write two four. 2, 1, 3, 5, 3, 2, 2, 4, 2, 1, 3, 5, 3, 2, okay. K is 5, that is the number of trials in the binomial distribution and uh, your N observed would be the same as the length of this X observed. Okay, and what are the total number of observations? And total would be 12 in our case, total number of data points. And n missing, let us write n missing would be the difference between the total number of observations minus the observed data points, number of observed data points. Okay, so these are the given data point this is given to us now we are going to take or initiate a value so let us assume that p old is 0.3 let us start with this it can vary from 0 to 1 so i'm just picking up 0.3 now we are going to define e step and function for e and m step define a function for e step So define E step over here. So in E step, you will have P and X observed and K because N, P and K would be there. So it would return N, P dot sum summation X, I and here we would have N, P dot log np dot array in bracket we would write p raised to the power xi into sorry xi it would be xi into 1 minus p times k minus x i k minus x i for x i in x observed ok so this is your e step so same thing that we have obtained in the lecture same i have written over here p s to power x i and 1 minus p raised, sorry, here it would be double star because p raised to power x i into 1 minus p raised to power k minus x i for x i is taking value in this x observed. Likewise, we are going to define a function for your m step. Define a function for m step. So define m step. So here we would write p old x observed and n missing. We 
what will be p nu in this case p nu would be np dot sum x observed okay within this only np dot sum observed the missing and that is n minus m times k and k into p old whole divided by n k that is n total into k and finally this would return your p nu okay so we have defined these two then we would set the tolerance level so we can use the same tolerance and the maximum number of iterations from here and copy this from here okay so tolerance is this for iteration in range max iterations okay now we are initiating a for loop in this case p nu would be m step whatever is calculated from here m step p old x observed k and missing so it would be assigned to p new okay and if the absolute value from here we are going to use from numpy this function abs absolute value that is the difference between the p new minus p old if this is less than your tolerance okay in that case we will break and we will come outside the loop otherwise p old would be assigned as p new and the loop will continue okay now you can print the mle print mle of p would be p underscore new p old sorry here k is missing in this step so let me rerun this sorry comma yeah so mle is 0.549 okay so you have simply first of all you have imported numpy and then you have written what is given to you as the data set and you have written how many observations are missing and then you have initiated a value for p that is estimator and you have defined the functions for your e and m step that we have already studied in the theory and those same steps we are writing we are just writing in terms of python and then finally we have written this p new we have obtained and then before initiating a for loop we define this tolerance level and maximum number of iterations and for each iteration it will go through this m step and whatever is there it will assign this to p new and now it will calculate the absolute difference between your p new and p old and if it comes out less than the tolerance level it would break otherwise it will be again assigned as p old and the process will continue okay and we saw that after doing this we obtain the mle of p as 0.54 or 0.55 okay so in these two cases we had a data set small data set and then we were working with that in order to find the mle's similarly if you have a synthetic data set also then also you can you can basically generate a data and then you can find the estimate okay so for that let us consider a small example from binomial case so em algorithm so just let me write synthetic binomial so some of the steps would be just same so let me just or i would write it okay so we are going to import numpy as np next 
np.random.seed so we are familiar with these terms over here 123 now we are just going to set the true parameter true p as suppose 0.6 okay and the total number of data points that we have is suppose 50 You can generate synthetic data from a binomial. So, let me just write synthetic np.random.binomial. So, from binomial, we are going to generate. So, np is 5, n is 5. And then you are going to have true p. True underscore p and n total over here. Okay. So np dot random dot binomial. And now you are going to split your data into observed and missing parts. Okay. So n observed is 30. Okay, so 30 observations are, you are having 30 observations out of 50 and x observed, let us take from the synthetic data that you have generated from that data, n observed. Okay, so out of this data set, 30 would be taken out and n missing would now be your n total that is 50 minus observed that is 20, 30. So, 50 minus 30 would be 20, 20 are missing. Let us initiate a p value. So, let me just sorry initial p is suppose 0.3 now we need to again define an e step and m step so probably we could just simply copy it from here we can use the same thing so let me just copy it from here and see if it is correct so define your e step first of all so p x observed k so return np dot sum np dot log np dot array these things would be same and now you will define a function for the um, m step to update your p so p new x observed and missing so everything is same in this case now tolerance and maximum number of iterations for iteration in range p new would be m step same thing so estimated p p new minus estimated p difference between these two is less than the tolerance then would break then estimated p sorry same as p new and if we print estimated p let me just write this finally 0.5933 okay this is what you get and you generated this data from binomial with parameter p was in this case point you initiated it with 0.3 okay and the true p that you took was 0.6 
you can see that it is very close to it because you generated a sample from binomial with parameter 0.6 and now what you are getting the estimated value is 0.5933 although there are 20 observations which are missing okay so this way also you can go ahead with your em algorithm so you just have to be familiar with how you are defining your functions and how your iteration is going to take place now this tolerance level can also be varied based upon your objective and then same steps would be performed so this basically completes your week 7 that was on unbiased estimation and em algorithm